Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment of Disney Fireside Chats. I am your host, James Buttleman, discussing all travel options to and from Walt Disney World. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and take and get started. One, two, three, action, action, action. I do want to take a moment here to highlight the shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, it is a gray shirt with blue writing, and it does say bucket list, go to Australia, locate 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Uh, so in the comment section below, go ahead and take and uh, note which movie that is from. Also, while you're there, please go ahead and take and, oh yes, it's over here this time. Go ahead and take and subscribe to this channel. Uh, the more subscribers that we do have, the more that I know that you want to take and have us continue these videos. I have a ton of different options and ideas in my head up here, uh, and I will continue to post them and continue to create them for you all. Also, in the comment section here or on our YouTube page, go ahead and take and uh, comment some additional video ideas that you may want. So, I'm from Michigan, and we did some hypothetical numbers pertaining to the costs of driving to Walt Disney World. So I took from Grand Rapids to Walt Disney World, 1,235 miles one way, 2,400 miles round trip. I did round up. Uh, you're looking at 18 hours of travel time if you don't stop anywhere. And if you're like my family, you have a lot of girls that need to go potty. Uh, so you do make lots of stops. Uh, so you're looking at 2,400 miles round trip, 25 miles per gallon in a Chrysler Town & Country minivan. 100 gallons of fuel will be used. Uh, that would cost between $250 and $300 depending on... Uh, the price of fuel and where you're going. Again, these fuel prices that I'm giving you right now, uh, I believe it was $259 at my closest or my local gas station. And then also down in Florida, it was like $229. And this is January 28th, uh, 2018. Other things that you have to consider uh, that you may or may not need a hotel. And that hotel, for instance, Chattanooga, Tennessee, halfway through, we like the Holiday Inn Express brand. Uh, they do offer free hot breakfast. There is a small pool there. Uh, not quite sure if it's heated or not, but you're looking at about $150 a night, uh, both there as well as back. Uh, you also have to consider toll roads. So near Kentucky, as well as the Florida Turnpike, there are tolls. And I did look at prices on those of about $50. You do also have to take and consider meals. You could pack meals, uh, but you may have to uh, purchase meals. So what I end up doing is priced out a breakfast for a family of five at a typical fast food restaurant, lunch at a typical fast food restaurant, and then dinner at like a mid-level sit-down, like a B-dubs, Qdoba, uh, Cracker Barrel, uh, any of those type of restaurants. Uh, plus snacks, maybe if you stop at a gas station or whatever the case may be, uh, you're looking at about $200 there. So your total cost for driving would be anywhere between $800 and $850 if you're driving from Grand Rapids to Walt Disney World and back, which is an economical option. Uh, parking at all of the Walt Disney World Resort hotels are free. You can ride the Disney transportation still, uh, the bus, the bo boats, and the monorail. However, if you want to take and uh, take your vehicle to the park and park it there, uh, you can do that. It is included as well for a resort guest. You are able to park in the park parking lots for free. Uh, if not, it's $20 per vehicle per day per park. Uh, driving down does give you a little bit of extra freedom than if you are using all of Disney's transportation services. So for instance, if you wanted to take and drive down, you don't necessarily have to stay in Disney property. Uh, one of the resort hotels or one of the hotels that I did look up in the area is Embassy Suites. It's a two bedroom suite. It does sleep six and it was about $250, which is very comparable to a moderate resort on Walt Disney World property. Uh, you don't get as many of the free perks or many of the included perks with the Disney trip if you choose to stay off property, uh, but you are able to still uh, get some of the, uh, the perks of being able to stay off property, like uh, being able to go to maybe Universal Studios, SeaWorld, Legoland, Gatorland. I didn't look at what those prices are uh, to give you a price comparison for tickets, uh, but that's something that you'd have to price out for your vacation. Uh, back to the Embassy Suites, the one that I did look at is on the iDrive. Uh, in Orlando. It is, again, a two-bedroom suite, sleep six, 250 bucks a night, and it does include hot breakfast, evening hors d'oeuvres, and uh, evening adult beverage if you choose to partake in that. Uh, parking there, though, is $20 per night. 
uh, and then you do have to pay the $20 per park uh, per day if you choose to drive to the parks. Uh, this resort does have complimentary transportation to the Walt Disney World parks, but it is not as streamlined as what Walt Disney World has for their own internal transportation. It is a scheduled system, and I believe they only take you there one time during the day or in the morning, and they only pick you up one time at night. So you're based on their schedule. Now, you could Uber and Lyft that if you wanted to uh, to try to save some money, but again, you're going to pay out money anyways for Uber and Lyft, and you might as well just pay to take and park. Uh, driving does add about two to four days to your vacation. You also have to think about how you can uh, entertain your children in the vehicle uh, for, for that long. Again, 18 hours worth of driving is a very long time. Our children last about two hours in the vehicle before they start crying, whining, having to take and get out. Uh, so uh, keep in mind, 18 hours is a long time, but some of your children may be able to uh, survive <laughs> in a vehicle that long. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and talk everything else about flying. So Michigan airports for us that have airlines that travel both between uh, those airports, Michigan airports, as well as Orlando International Airports will be Grand Rapids, Detroit Metro, Lansing, Muskegon, Traverse City, and Flint. Later in the program here, I'm going to talk just about Grand Rapids and Detroit Metro airports. Uh, Orlando does have two airports, but one of them you really just shouldn't even consider an airport for Orlando because there's no services uh, that are offered from Disney at those airports. Uh, you have to still get a rental car, or use Uber and Lyft, and it's only one airline. It's really not much of a savings, but we'll at least talk about it uh, for the sake of uh, at least providing some input to that airport. Uh, so there are two airports. are going to be Orlando International Airport, or MCO, and then Orlando Sanford, which is SAN. Those are the airport codes. Uh, but again, Orlando International Airport is pretty much the only airport that I'm going to talk about from here on out. Now, many of you may or may not have been flying uh, within the past few years. Uh, for some of you, you may have never flown before ever. Uh, and so some things to consider uh, for the Transportation Security Agency or TSA is that if you're nice to them, they're typically going to be nice to you. Mind you, they have a job. They have to be 100% right all the time. Uh, they have to get it right every single time because if they don't, it's disastrous for everybody. Uh, so give them a break, but also make sure that you know what the rules are. Always check the TSA website. TSA Cares does have a phone number that you can take and call, and also there is a, a TSA Instagram handle where you can take a picture of something and ask them if this is allowed uh, to go on an airplane, whether it's check bat, truck luggage or a carry-on item. Uh, so the first thing that I do want to take and highlight is a 311 rule as it pertains to carry-on liquids that go through the TSA checkpoint. So this is right from their website. You are allowed to bring a quart-sized bag of liquids, aerosols, gels, creams, paste in your carry-on bag and through the checkpoint. These are limited to travel size containers that are 3.4 ounces or 100 millimeters or less per bag. Placing these items in a small bag and separating them from your carry-on luggage facilitates the screening process. So what that means here is that you have it in your carry-on bag, you have to remove it from your carry-on bag, put it in its own tub, run the carry-on bag through, and then run your liquids through there. Now, flying, you have different types of luggage. You, you have personal items, which are basically purses and small backpacks, anything that can go underneath the seat in front of you. You have carry-on bags, which are allowed to go through TSA along with those personal items, and they are what goes above in uh, the overhead bins. And then you have check luggage, which is what goes underneath the airplane that you check in prior to going through TSA. Uh, something to keep in mind is with a carry-on bag, laptops and tablets need to be removed. Uh, if you are going to bring liquids through, they have to follow that 3.4 ounces or less. Uh, my suggestion to you, though, is bring an empty water bottle so that you can take and fill it post-security. There's typically uh, water bottle refill stations post-security, so you can still benefit from being able to stay hydrated, but you don't have to take and purchase a high bottle price, uh, high price bottle of water uh, from the airport itself. Uh, everything must go through the x-ray machine, including car seats, strollers, uh, your luggage, your liquids. Everything has to take and go through there. Any item that cannot go through the x-ray machine, like a large stroller, double stroller, uh, those go through a secondary screening. They're swabbed for explosives and other items, and then you are able to uh, continue using that. Uh, medical bags are allowed to go through as long as they are declared. Prescriptions that you have must be labeled, especially if they're liquids. Uh, and then they do follow that same secondary screening process like they do with larger items like a stroller where they check it for potentially explosives or other um, prohibited items. 
Uh, also keep in mind that lithium batteries are not allowed to go in checked bags. Those things have to go in your carry-on or they're not allowed to go, period. Uh, there is an issue with pressurization and other things underneath the airplane, and so lithium batteries are not allowed to go in your checked bag. A TSA does check those. Uh, they must be unlocked or they must have a TSA approved lock. Uh, you're not allowed to have firearms in there unless you declare them, but again, you shouldn't be taking firearms to Disney, so why am I even telling you that? Uh, liquids that you have that are over 3.4 ounces are allowed to go into your check bag. Another tip that I can provide to you is you should put them in a gallon-sized plastic baggie, so if they do tend to leak, if they get tipped over or squished, uh, they do not leak onto your nice, beautiful, clean clothes that you want to wear when you get to Disney. A service that TSA does offer that I do highly recommend and I am a recipient of myself is TSA PreCheck. It's a paid service where they, uh, TSA as well as uh, other federal agencies do run a background check on you which allows you to go through an accelerated screening process. The fee for that is $85 but it is good for five years and what this allows you to do is you have your own line, uh, you're able to go through the metal detector and or advanced screening technology. Uh, you don't have to remove your shoes, you don't have to remove your belt, no removing a light jacket and then children that are flying with you that are under the age of 12 are able to enter through the pre-check with you as well. And again, I was able to get through pre-check, uh, go to Grand Rapids, check my bag at the airline counter, be able to go through TSA, and be able to go to Starbucks in eight minutes or less uh, a couple weeks ago. Screening technology that TSA does have is they have the metal detector, uh, they have advanced imaging technology where you stand with your feet apart, and you put your hands above your head and this little thing machine does like a half circle around you and it scans your entire body. Uh, it does animate your body in the sense that it doesn't show any uh, private parts, but it does show if you have anything in your pockets uh, and then it would tag or flag a, a TSA agent to take and do additional screening uh, if for some reason that machine did pick up that you had something uh, in your pockets. Also, if you do not want to use either of those two screening processes, you can take and get a pat down. Uh, this is highly recommended if you are pregnant. There is no evidence to prove or disprove that it causes any issues to your unborn child. However, you can never be safe, too safe to be sorry. Uh, and so for our family, we choose to have the pat down. They're very professional. They use the back of their hands as the female agent. Uh, again, if you're polite to them, they're going to be polite to you. Uh, traveling with children, children under 12 can leave their shoes on, light jackets, and headwear even if they're going through regular screening. Uh, children are not to be separated from their parents, so they will never separate you. Uh, infants that are in an infant carrier must be removed prior to going through the metal detector. If they are in a cloth sling, uh, they are allowed to stay in there. However, the TSA agent may want to do additional screening uh, on you or on that infant post the uh, metal detector, uh, they are not allowed to go through the advanced screening technology. Ice packs, freezer packs, frozen gel packs, and other accessories required to cool formula, breast milk, and juice are allowed in carry-on as long as they are frozen. They cannot be unfrozen uh, if they are over the 3.4 ounces because that is considered a liquid. Uh, but as long as they are frozen and somehow they are labeled from the manufacturer that they are for formula, breast milk, or juice storage, you are allowed to take those through. Also keep in mind, solid foods are allowed to go through TSA. So if you have children, you can take and pack snacks uh, in that carry-on bag or in that personal item. And it does allow them to be able to have some snacks in a non-convenient time like boarding, deplaning, waiting for the, the flight attendant to walk them down the aisle, maybe offer you some of the snacks. Uh, when you get to Orlando International, uh, solid foods are allowed to be placed. Solid foods are allowed uh, to be checked in your carry-on bag or in your personal bag. So if you are flying with children and they want to be able to have snacks, uh, they are allowed to take and have snacks uh, available to them as long as you take and bring them. Uh, when you do arrive at Orlando International Airport, and you are choosing to take the transportation from the airport provided by Disney, which is called Magical Express, to your resort hotel. Uh, keep in mind that it's only at Orlando International Airport. It is located in Terminal B, which is in the lower level. Uh, you use your magic band for check-in. Uh, if you have luggage and you were provided the Magical Express letter in the mail and you have this little yellow tag, uh, this goes on the luggage at your home airport along with the airline luggage tag. And what this does is this flags Orlando International Airport 
uh, luggage baggage claim individuals that you are choosing to use their luggage service and what they'll do is they'll pick up your bag for you and they will take it to your resort to hotel within three to six hours after you arrive. So you don't have to go to a luggage carousel and pick up a bag. Now this is only one bag per person uh, that Disney offers. So if you are choosing to bring down additional luggage with you, uh, you would still have to go to that luggage carousel uh, to take and pick that luggage up prior to leaving the airport. But if you put the yellow tag on, plan on it being there three to six hours after you arrive. Uh, Magical Express drivers do, uh, or they are allowed, Magical Express drivers are allowed to receive tips and the typical going rate for providing a tip to them is $1 per person per bag that they handle. Uh, keep in mind that the line queues are, could take up to 30 minutes for you to get onto the bus once you arrive at the airport. Uh, the Magical Express bus is very similar to like a charter bus. It does have comfier seats. It does have seat belts if you choose to wear them. Car seats are not allowed on the uh, bus. So if you have an infant that is in a car seat, that car seat does have to go underneath and the infant is just riding on your lap up above. There are TVs on the bus that do provide uh, some safety videos as well as some cartoons and Disney trivia while you're waiting to leave as well as while you are driving there. Uh, there are multiple resort stops per bus. So, for instance, uh, the All-Star Resort Hotels, it stops at um, movies. No, sorry. The Magical Express buses do service multiple resorts from the airport. Uh, so, for instance, the All-Star Resorts, it's going to take and stop at Sports First, then Music, then Movies. Uh, if you're going to Pop Century Art of Animation, it's going to take and stop at Art of Animation first, then Pop Century uh, for the guests. And they do make announcements on the bus as you are arriving at those resorts to make sure that you are getting off at the right resort. Uh, returning home, they will provide you a flyer uh, on your door one to two days prior to your departure, and it has basically a letter in there, very similar to the one that you'll receive prior to your uh, flight or prior to your vacation, and uh, they will give you some tips and tricks in there about luggage service, if it's offered or not for uh, return flight back home, if you can check in at the resort. Uh, it does leave four hours prior to flight departure. And the reason for that is Orlando Airport sees 22 million plus people every year. TSA gets busy, gets backed up. Sometimes you could be there for two hours in line. Uh, and considering you want to take and board 30 minutes ahead of your flight, and you want to be able to check your luggage and do all of that other stuff, go to the bathroom, get something to eat. Uh, so you do need that four hours worth of time. Again, tips are uh, accepted by the bus drivers, uh, $1 per person per bag. Uh, they do offer resort check-in. So all of the resorts do offer airline check-in uh, as long as your flight is between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. So what that equates to is uh, the resort check-in is open from 5 a.m. to 12 p.m but you ride Magical Express four hours prior to your flight departure. So you add four hours to those times, it's between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. And resort airline check-in is offered for Alaska Airlines, American, Delta, JetBlue, Southwest, and United. And again, the luggage service is offered for you uh, to return home. So if you do the airline check-in at your resort, you provide them your luggage, they put the tags on it, they take it to the airport for you, and it just shows up at the baggage carousel back to your home airport. You do have some other transportation services. Uh, you are able to get rental cars as well as Uber and Lyft. Your rental cars, there's a whole mirage of different companies that are available in Orlando uh, at Orlando International Airport. Keep in mind that if you are going to get a rental car, you do want to take and check those car seats. Uh, checking those car seats are completely free on most major airlines. Uh, if you do not check those in, you do have to take and pay a fee for car seats. And I'm a car seat freak, and so I want to make sure that I have car seats that I know are for my children. Also, before you leave home, call your uh, auto insurance company and check and see if uh, you have renter's insurance uh, pertaining to rental cars. Uh, if you don't, you may want to consider what those extra rental fees may be through those rental car companies. Also, do not prepay for fuel. Uh, I don't prepay for fuel because I do tend to stop at the gas station. And as long as you stop at a gas station within 10 miles of the airport, uh, they do not charge you for fuel. If you decide to take and bring the vehicle back to the airport uh, with less fuel than full, uh, they will charge you a premium for refilling that vehicle. 
Also, because you are traveling on the Florida Turnpike, they do have transponders in the car. So ask them about the SunPass transponder fees. Uh, when I was there in November a couple years ago, the, responder, the transponder rental fee was more expensive than the fares themselves. And if I would have had cash, I would have just went through those uh, kiosks and paid cash for the toll versus taking and paying the responder uh, transponder fee. Also, there are some deposits that are hidden, so make sure you call uh, the company prior to your trip and ask them what any security deposits may be. I know the easy car rental is double the price of your rental. Uh, I believe Enterprise is like 20% of your rental fee. Uh, Thrifty and Hertz, I believe, are like $250 or $300 on top of whatever your rental fee is. So the price that you see online is not necessarily the price that you would take and pay. Also, if you're less than 25 years old, you're going to be paying a higher premium as well. Uh, Uber and Lyft are available. Both typically are about three, I'm sorry. Uber and Lyft are available uh, from the airport to your resort. It is going to be much faster than Magical Express. Uh, you still need your car seats and you're looking at about $30 per ride. I do still recommend that uh, if you are going to use Uber and Lyft to go back to the airport, uh, that you do take and get to the airport at least two hours uh, prior to your flight. Another tip I can take and provide you is that if you are connecting through an airport, so if your airline is connecting through a different airport, make sure that when you're booking that, that you are putting at least an hour in between your arrival time at that connecting airport and your departing time. Because your boarding time is going to be 30 minutes. It sometimes takes 10 to 15 minutes to get off of the airplane. So you're looking at only having about 10 to 15 minutes to be able to get something to eat, go to the bathroom, and also take and walk to uh, your gate. I do recommend that you, when booking your vacation, I do recommend that when booking your vacation, I would suggest that you look at I do recommend that when you are booking your vacation through the Disney website that you do consider uh, looking at what an airline would charge. Ah, crap, my nose itches. Another tip that I can provide to you is that uh, when you are booking your trip through the Disney's reservation system, uh, you are offered an option for you to book your airfare as well. Uh, sometimes the airfare is going to be cheaper if you book it through Disney than if you take and you book directly on the website of the airline. Airlines will tell you if you book directly through their website, you're going to find the cheapest fare. Uh, if you're doing a last minute trip, Priceline or Orbitz tend to be cheaper than the airline itself. Uh, but in, uh, way ahead of time, you may find a discounted rate by booking your vacation and your airline through the Disney's website. Now, I will tell you, in the very first video, I talk about the $200 security deposit if you're booking a room and dining and or pick, uh, park tickets with that. Uh, if you are booking the airfare that is not part of the $200 deposit, you still have to pay the full airfare uh, in full. Uh, so make sure that you keep that in mind when you're doing your budgeting for that. Now, what I'm going to do here in this video is I'm going to spend the next probably 20 minutes talking about the two different airports, both Grand Rapids and Detroit. And for the airports, I'm going to talk about the airlines that it services between that airport and the Orlando International Airport, parking options and prices, terminals, food options, amenities, and then flight times. So Grand Rapids first. The airlines that fly from Grand Rapids to Orlando International Airport include Delta, American, United, Southwest, and Frontier. Southwest and Frontier do offer direct flights. Southwest is only offering direct flights currently from the month of November to the month of April to accommodate snowbirds that are flying to and from Florida. Uh, but Frontier does offer direct flights to Orlando all year round. Your parking options include an economy uh, parking lot where there's a shuttle that takes you from the parking lot to the airport terminal. And then when you arrive back, uh, back to your vehicle for you, uh, I do recommend paying or, or tipping that shuttle driver uh, $1 per person per bag. The shuttle is free, uh, gratuity is accepted. Uh, it's $9 per day, $54 per week. Your seventh day is free. Long-term parking, which is an out, another outdoor uh, parking lot. It's called the Long-Term North Lot. That is $10 per day, $60 per week. Seventh day is free. Long-term parking structure. So there is a four-story parking structure on Grand, or Grand Rapids Airport property. Uh, it does offer you very close access to the terminal itself. 
and also it's covered. So in the winter time, you don't have to worry about wiping off your vehicle. Uh, so you're going to pay a little bit higher of a premium price, but it's still very economical. $13 per day, $78 per week. Valet parking. So if you want to be able to call when you land in Grand Rapids and say, hey, uh, I'm, I'm here, please get my car ready for me and have it nice and warm, especially in the wintertime, pull right up curbside for you, $21 per day, $147 per week, and then I would recommend that you arrive at the airport at least an hour to an hour and a half prior to your flight. Uh, there is one airport terminal building with two wings, you have the A terminal and the B terminal wings, uh, there is a single security checkpoint, just newly renovated, that airport is absolutely gorgeous. Food options, pre-security, include Starbucks and Quiznos. And then post-security is Starbucks, the Michigan Tap Room, the Great American Bagel, both in the A-Wing as well as the B-Wing, and then Prospect Hill, which is a restaurant bar that's overlooking the airfield uh, just immediately beyond security. Amenities in this airport does include free Wi-Fi. There are two business centers available to you. Uh, you also have the observation deck, which is on the second story of the pre-security side of the terminal. So if you have anybody that's watching you take off, or they're dropping you off, or they're coming to pick you up, they can go up there and watch the airplanes land and take off and then kind of do all the airfield operations. Uh, there are two children's play areas. There's one pre-security as well as post-security. And then there's also a couple different gift shops that are available, and they do have some handmade, Michigan-made items uh, in those gift shops. Your typical flight time for a direct flight from Grand Rapids to Orlando is going to be about 2 hours and 15 minutes all the way up to 2 and a half hours. Every single flight that I have had recently whether it was Southwest or Frontier, that was a direct flight from Grand Rapids to Orlando, has been about two hours. They planned for two and a half hours, uh, just in case there's any delays, uh, but it was directly two hours almost on the dot. Uh, Detroit Airport airlines include American, Delta, Frontier, JetBlue, Southwest, Spirit, and United, with Frontier, Southwest, and Spirit offering direct flights. Your parking options and those prices for those, for Detroit you have the green lot, which is $11 per day, uh, and that's a free shuttle van that takes you from that parking lot to the airport. Uh, and it's, it's on the airport property or very near close to airport property. Uh, I, again, I recommend a tip $1 per person per bag. Uh, you have the big blue parking deck, which is the uh, parking lot that services the north terminal building. That's $13 per day. And then you have McNamara parking, which services the McNamara terminal. And that prices are $23 per day for self-park or $40 per day uh, for valet. I do recommend that you do get to this airport at least an hour and a half to two hours early uh, because the security checkpoint is much busier than Grand Rapids. There are two terminal buildings there, the McNamara Terminal, which is services only Delta, and then you have the North Terminal that services all other airlines that I mentioned earlier. There are 14 food options in the North Terminal building, including Earl of Sandwich, McDonald's, Ruby Tuesday, Starbucks, TGI Fridays, Hockey Town Cafe, and then there's 42 options in the McNamara Terminal, uh, like Chick-fil-A, Chili's, Max and Irma's, McDonald's, Popeye's, uh, Zingerman's, Qdoba, Subway, Starbucks, Wendy's, and Tim Hortons. All of those are McNamara. Uh, McNamara, that hub there, or that terminal, is the hub for Delta for Detroit area. Uh, for all the flights that are basically traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast, they're connecting through Detroit or Minneapolis. Uh, that is the main hub there for them. Uh, unfortunately, paid Wi-Fi, so there's not free Wi-Fi, so you have to pay for Wi-Fi uh, in the Detroit airport. Uh, there are nine shopping options in the North Terminal, and then there's 43 shopping options in the McNamara Terminal. And you, again, you're looking at an hour and a half to an hour to two hours for your flight times uh, from Detroit to Grand Ra or to uh, Orlando. So from Detroit to Orlando, you're looking at approximately an hour and a half to two hours for your actual flight time. Now, the last thing that I'm going to take and talk about here is going to be specifically about the airlines. And I'm going to highlight two airlines that I have flown recently, both Southwest Airlines as well as Frontier Airlines. And I'm going to cover flight schedules, luggage, check-in processes, the boarding process, and how far out from your flight do you want to take and board, in-flight items like snacks, drinks, Wi-Fi, TV, credit card applications, uh, first-time flyer stuff, uh, flying with children, give you tips and tricks for each one of those airlines, and then talking about booking flights, if it's available for Disney Airline check-in, and then also the frequent flyer programs that they offer. So the first airline we're going to take and talk about is Southwest Airlines. They typically release their schedules uh, every six months. So February 8th of this year, they're going to be releasing the schedule through the end of September. Uh, typically, your summer months flying from Grand Rapids, they're going to connect through either Baltimore, St. Louis, or Chicago Midway uh, during November through April. It's a direct flight. 
Uh, luggage is uh, two free bags per person that's checked underneath the airplane, plus your offer to carry on, plus you're allowed a personal item. So uh, this is a huge benefit, especially for a larger family that is going to Walt Disney World that allows you to basically pack an entire bag full of snacks uh, so that you can save some costs on uh, food at the resorts if you choose not to have the dining plan. And so for us, we ended up going to Sam's or Costco and Aldi and we got a bunch of snacks and packed them in the bag uh, and diapers and wipes and whatever else we needed and just shipped that bag underneath the airplane with all the rest of our bags and uh, we had tons of food available to us. And again, they're completely free. Most airlines charge anywhere between $25 and $50 per bag uh, per way of your trip. Uh, Southwest Airlines, their seats are seating is a little bit different than uh, any other airline that I'm aware of, and it's called open seating. And what they do is they board you based upon boarding position. So there are three zones, A, B, and C, and then there are numbers from 1 through 60. So A, 1 through 60, B, 1 through 60, C, 1 through 60. So the earlier you check in for your flight, and you can check in up to 24 hours from your flight, uh, the better boarding position you get. And what that does is it allows you to basically get on the airplane and then you can pick any seat that's available to you. So if you want a window or an aisle, uh, you're going to want to be in the earlier boarding uh, zones. Now, I will tell you that if you do have children uh, between the A zone and the B zone, so they do A1 through 15, then 15 through 30, and then 30 through 60 for the A zone, once they are done with that A zone, the B zone holds and family boarding occurs. So if you have children under the age of nine and you have at least one adult going with that child, you're able to board between A and B, which gives you extra time to be able to get seated. Uh, it typically allows you to go further back in the airplane. Uh, for us, it's a great thing because we're all able to take and get on the plane. We're all able to get seats next to one another and we usually don't have a major issue. Uh, children are not allowed to sit in the exit rows. Any child under the age of 13 is not allowed to sit there. Uh, so if you are flying with children, make sure that you can or you do not sit in the exit rows. Uh, on Southwest Airlines, in-flight items include snacks. So you get peanuts, cookies, snack mix. Those are completely complimentary. Uh, pop, juice, water, coffee, and hot cocoa, that's complimentary as well. Uh, beer, wine, spirits, mixed drinks are all $5 each. Uh, there is free Dish Network TV on the airplanes, on most of the airplanes, as well as Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi is $8 per day per device. If you want to send iMessages or What's Up app messages, uh, that is $2 per per day per device but TV is complimentary and they do have HD TV they have Disney Channel uh, they have news channels as well as the Food Network so it's a limited number of channels uh, but they do offer those available to you for free on your laptop or your mobile device flying with children on Southwest is actually very pleasant uh, strollers and car seats can be checked at the ticket counter for free or you can take and check them at the gate and so what that does is it allows you to use them all the way through the airport all the way down the sky bridge and or the jet bridge and once you are getting ready to get onto the airplane you just fold it up set it down they put a little tag on there for you ahead of you going uh, down there and uh, they put it underneath the airplane and then you pick it back up from there uh, when you get to the airport uh, they do follow the same tsa process which i already talked about the changing table on all of the southwest jets that i have been on are in the very front bathroom up near the cockpit uh, birth certificates and shot records for any child under the age of two is required uh, if you are choosing to have it be a lap infant and not pay a ticket for your child under the age of two, uh, you do have to have a copy, a picture, or the physical hard copy of the birth certificate or the shots record to prove uh, both their citizenship as well as that they are under the age of two. Even if they look like it, you still have to have it. And again, under the age of two are free. Uh, they do offer some cool little perks for children as their first time flying. All of our children receive first time flyer certificates and the flight attendants actually made a bunch of crowns for them. And what they did is they took the little stirrer sticks that have like a heart on the top of them and they punched holes in all of the peanut bags. And they took like 20 peanut bags and put the, or threaded the, um, uh, the stirrer stick through there. And then the girls were able to wear that. They got a little certificate 
and then they got the little sticky uh, pilot wings as well. Uh, you do book your Southwest Airlines flights through their website. Uh, they do offer Disney Airline check-in, and their frequent flyer program is called Rapper Rewards. It's free. Go ahead and sign up for it, especially if you're going to take and fly with them. And as long as you fly once a year, you're able to keep your points. The next airline I'm going to take and talk about is uh, Frontier Airlines. Same type of system from a flight scheduling standpoint, typically uh, six months out. Uh, they do have direct flights from both Grand Rapids as well as Detroit. The difference, though, for Frontier is it's much more of a budget airline, whereas Southwest offers two free check bags. They offer a lot of free stuff on the airplane, uh, paid Wi-Fi, uh, free TV, uh, the children's stuff. All of that is not included for complimentary on uh, Frontier Airlines. You are allowed one free personal item on the airplane, and then a carry-on bag and or your checked luggage do have uh, costs associated with them. Your carry-on bag is anywhere between $35 and $45, depending on when you take and pay that fee, and your checked luggage is anywhere between $30 and $45. And that's not, uh, or that is... Luggage costs for Frontier Airlines. Frontier does allow one free personal item, uh, which has to go underneath the seat. Uh, but if you have any carry-on luggage, it needs to go in the bins above your head, or you're going to take and check a bag underneath the airplane. Uh, those fees are anywhere between $30 and $45 per bag per way of your trip, depending on when you take and pay for that. They do offer the perks uh, discount, which basically takes your... Uh, seat fee of $15. So if you want to have an assigned seat, you have to pay the $15 for that. If not, they assign your seat when you check in. Uh, and then it allows you to take your personal item, the checked in bag, and the uh, carry on bag. And I think they also give you a free drink as well. And I think that's like 75 bucks. So if you have a lot of luggage, that perks system may be worth it for you. Uh, but for us, when we just went down for just a couple days, it was a benefit because we were able to pack everything in our backpacks, which is a personal item, slid underneath the seat, and we didn't have any luggage costs. You could also take and look at maybe shipping your clothes or your items to Disney that may be cheaper than checking them underneath your bag. Uh, just call the Disney Resort and ask them about how they receive packages ahead of you arriving and then also how they are able to ship those packages back out for you. Uh, In-flight items, everything has a cost associated with it for Frontier Airlines with the exception of a glass of ice water. Uh, so if you want a glass of ice water, that is complimentary. Uh, but pop juice, bottled water, all $3 each. Beer, wine, and spirits, $8 each. Snacks, $3 each. They do have combos that are available, anywhere between $5 and $30, depending on what the combo is that you're looking for. And they do not offer TV or Wi-Fi on the planes. Frontier Airlines is uh, children-friendly as well, or child-friendly. Uh, they do have a kid zone, which is really from seat tw row 22 all the way back to the back of the plane. Uh, the restroom in the back is where the changing table is at. They do have little trading cards uh, that they do offer to children. Uh, children under the age of two are able to fly for free if they are sitting on your lap. If you want to assign a seat to them, uh, you do have to take and pay a regular seat fee for them. Uh, and then the other thing that I thought was interesting with Frontier Airlines is that they do not require a proof of birth or a shot record for that infant, and that infant is actually on your electronic boarding pass. So if you have a cell phone uh, or a watch and you want to use the electronic boarding pass process, that child is on there. Southwest, it's a paper for or paper boarding pass, and they make you check in at the counter. So you can't even use a self kiosk if you have a child under the age of two through Southwest. But Frontier Airlines does offer that uh, service available to you. Uh, booking flights is through the Frontier website. Also, you may want to consider uh, purchasing the Den deal if you're looking at doing multiple flights throughout the year. It's 50 bucks for an entire year, and they give you first access to discounts. Uh, you get typical discounted fares. It, it will tend to be the lowest fares available, and it's for up to six people as long as you are booking uh, within that trip for yourself and then uh, six others or five others. Uh, they're able to take and get that deal. So for us in September, it ended up being a wash. Uh, so if I would have purchased the den, or when I purchased the den deal, it was fifty dollars less, but the den deal was fifty dollars. So basically, it was the exact same price that I was going to pay, and I got the perks of the den deal, and I've been able to use it a couple times and be able to save uh, quite a few hundred of dollars 
uh, as it pertains to airfare because I had this available to me. And then also they have early returns, uh, frequent flyer program, and as low as 10,000 miles with Frontier Airlines, you can take and get a free flight uh, from one airport to another depending on uh, where they have that discounted flight or, or that um, frequent flyer rewards flight available to you. So with that all, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate uh, you watching and tuning in. Uh, next week's video or is going to be on dining, character dining in particular, as well as the dining plan. So make sure you go to take and tune in. And also in this section here, go ahead and take and subscribe to this channel. And also in the comments, please put uh, any additional videos or any questions you may have. And I'm going to try to uh, provide as much detail or as many links as I can uh, to make your Disney vacation planning as simple as possible. So with that, thank you all very much.